In this video, we're going to cover an important yet confusing topic. How to properly ground an off-grid solar system. I will talk about stationary systems, like a cabin or a home, and a mobile system, which can be a camper. I'm Nick. I teach people how to build an off-grid solar power system. Let me take you behind my screen and explain the different diagrams. Let's talk about grounding a stationary off-grid system, like one you would set up for a cabin or a home. There are several components that need grounding, like your solar panels, inverter and charge controller. There are two types of grounding we need to talk about, DC ground and AC ground. These should stay separate, because mixing them can cause interference. As you can see in the diagram, we keep these separate. When it comes to grounding the frame of your solar panels, it's important not to place an additional grounding rod right next to your panels. If your house already has a grounding rod, putting another one close by can create grounding loops, which can lead to problems, especially if lightning strikes nearby. Instead, run a grounding conductor which should be the same size as your PV cables, directly to the AC grounding bus bar, which then connects to the main grounding rod of your system. For your DC components, like the charge controller and inverter, you will need a separate grounding bus bar to bond them together. Each DC component gets its own grounding wire going directly to the grounding bus bar. Don't daisy chain these components, because if you remove one, you will interrupt the grounding for the others. From this grounding DC bus bar, you should run a single cable to the main battery negative terminal, or to the negative bus bar if you have one. This is a one-time connection and should only be made once. Don't make this link in multiple places. Now, about sizing the grounding wire. This wire needs to be able to carry a fault current. There's some debate on the size, but a good rule of thumb is to use a conductor that's half the size of the current carrying conductor. So, if you're using a 4 gauge wire, which is 25 mm square, as your battery cables, use a 6 gauge grounding wire, which is 16 mm square. Check your device manual for the specific recommendations as well. Let's see how we have to ground on the AC system. On the AC side of your system, you will have an AC ground coming out of the inverter. Your AC distribution box should have a grounding bus bar in it. This is where you collect all the AC grounds from your loads. It's also where you bond the neutral and the ground together. This is called a ground neutral bond. But I will dive deeper into that in a future video, so make sure you are subscribed. Now let's talk about mobile setups, like a camper or an RV. In a mobile system, you don't have a grounding rod to stick in the ground. Instead, you'll connect your solar panel frame to the DC bus bar, which is tied to the chassis of your vehicle. But before you do that, check the resistance between the roof racking, where your solar panels sit, and the chassis. If the resistance is already zero, that means they're already connected, and you won't need to run an extra wire. Adding another wire could cause a grounding loop, which we want to avoid. As with a stationary system, all your DC components, like the charge controller, DC to DC charger and inverter, should be bonded to the DC ground bus bar. Then, run one cable from the bus bar to the main battery negative terminal, and another to the chassis, which acts as a ground in mobile systems. On the AC side, if you're using an inverter, you will need to bond the neutral to the ground. But 
If your inverter is also a charger or an all-in-one system, this can get complicated and I'll talk more about it in a future video. The AC devices will have a grounding wire as well. Connect them to the AC grounding bus bar located in the AC distribution box. This is similar to stationary systems. As you might have guessed, this topic is quite complicated. If there are any updates, I will post them in the description of this video. This video is made possible by my research and with resources from Victron's Wiring Unlimited document and Filter Guy on DIY Solar Forum. I will link his resources in the description as well. If you are confused about solar power, I made a playlist for beginners. Check it out here. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.